Okay, Bolo Buddies, I just left the Goodwill Benz and I spent the most I have ever spent. I spent $111. I'm hoping that I can make my money back with a couple of those items. So let's get digging. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Okay, we are here at the Goodwill Bins. I love it. Um, I am going to be bringing you guys more and more and more of these videos. So let me know what you think. So what I do is I go to the Goodwill Bins. I come home. I list everything. That way I can keep this educational and pop up screen shares for you guys of how I listed everything. Now, I spent over a hundred dollars during this trip and the footage i had so much footage so this is going to be broken into two separate videos so everything you see is just part of that hundred and whatever i said at the beginning 11 or something like that uh dollars that i spent this little boyd's bear if you can find the boyd's bear minis with the little t-shirts that say things those are a big money bolo the one I found I just thought was super cute. I've got it priced a little bit high. I also found the plush dog, which was an advertising piece, and it had pretty good comps. So definitely excited about those two plush right out the gate. So how I list things, I've talked to you guys about this before, but if you're new to my channel, I start by comping the item, and I will list on the higher end of solds. And then I create a sale usually around 35 usually 35% is I like to be at 35% but I have been doing some 38% to try to move things. And then I put best offer on my items and I send out offers. So I am constantly doing things to engage my customers. I did pick up this little Wonder Woman keychain and this little seal plush. So so far I've just found cute little plush items, but Plush does sell. One thing that I do want to mention about plush items, typically they can be long tail. What does long tail mean? It means that it can take a while to sell. I am a list it and forget it kind of girl. I list so many items that I just give them an item number, throw them in a tote, and I forget about them. And that best offer keeps people coming in and making me offers, and those items sell. I have items from when I used to sell clothing that I had multi-quantity of. Some items I would have 50 or 60 of just one item. I'm still selling those items today, and those items have been listed for 10 years, some of them. But I've had so many of them that I still have some left. So uh, like I said, list it and forget it. That is not for everyone. I know some people, after so long, they get rid of it. I did find that little plush. That is a Disney store plush. It's from Doc McStuffins. And later on, you're gonna see that I find the snowman. So I decided to lot those together because I felt like that's gonna bring in maybe a different buyer and maybe an advantage for me. This is a little Ikea squirrel. And I don't normally pick up those Lego plates, but I was like, I'm just gonna try this. It's a five by five. Somebody may need this as a replacement part. So I'm going to see if I can sell that Lego plate. That will also probably be a long tail item. We all like fast sales, but I will tell you that every day when I sell things, some of my long tail items are selling and those items all add up. Okay, I did find another Ikea frog. Now, how did I figure this out? I used Google Lens. I um, was not sure what those were. The tags had been cut off. And if you don't know, the Ikea tags are super long. So to be expected that those are gonna be cut off. And probably the person buying it is not gonna care because um, they would probably cut those tags off as well. But for identification purposes, the only way I was gonna figure that out was Google Lens. And I do have a tutorial video on how to use Google Lens. It is free. You can download Google Lens to your phone for free and take pictures of items and it will pull them up for you. It'll even give you clickable links, like if it's on eBay. 
But what I like to do is I like to look the item up and then go and search eBay solds for comparables. Okay, we are gonna keep digging here. If you guys like these types of videos, I have a whole bunch on my channel and plan to bring you more. Right here, beat the clock. <laughs> I bought a bunch of these. I am hoping that I paid book weight, but I honestly cannot remember. Um, I thought these were really cool. I thought they'd be a great homeschooling item. And um, the Rebel reseller talks about buying homeschooling items all the time, and she does really well with them. I have not listed these yet. They need batteries, and I need to test them. And I've just been kind of lazy about it. And to be quite honest with you, I don't know where I put them. <laughs> so they're sitting maybe in my garage. I don't know. There was a big stack of them. So I just kind of threw them to the side. Now, if you see me pick something up and throw it in my cart and then you do not see a screenshot, that means I threw the item back in. A lot of times I am just quick looking, quick digging and throwing things in my cart and then I will look things up. A lot of times I forget to look things up and they come home with me. Uh, that was a little Starbucks bear. I don't know why I didn't end up picking that up because some of the Starbucks bears do okay. Mostly bread and butter. Um, what you're looking for are some of the Starbucks mugs. Go into eBay Solds and search high to low Starbucks mugs. It's amazing what some can go for. I did pick up that little headlight, that dinosaur headlight. Thought it was super cute. And I grabbed this rattle. This rattle, I feel like could be something that somebody is, like a child is gonna lose and a parent is gonna need that item. So it's a bread and butter bolo, but I feel like eventually it will sell to the right person. And that person is gonna be so happy that I had that item. There's a lot of items where I get messages from parents saying, oh my goodness, my child lost this. I am so thankful that you had it. So as Donatella Bottolino always says, Someone is looking for this. So if you're new here, you probably don't know who Donatella Bottolino is. She has a YouTube channel and she has selling events. So she sells to resellers and I purchase from her often. So if you watch my what sold videos or my unboxing videos, whenever I buy something from her YouTube uh, selling event, either a mystery box or a reseller box that she's selling on her channel, I will do unboxings on this channel. And um, I also buy from auctions for you. I'll link those both down below if you guys are looking for inventory. It's a great way to source from the comfort of your home. Um, I did pick up that plush bear, uh, cute little bear. Again, just another bread and butter. Uh, plush mostly is gonna be bread and butter, but I pulled a plush out of the bins not too long ago and I sold it for, I'm gonna show you a picture here a best offer of $64, so that was incredible. This little um, pig, these are from Olivia Pig. That was a ballerina, and there was also a painter there. I find the painter later. A lot of times I will lot stuffed animals or different toys together just to kind of get different eyes on my items. So somebody that's searching for maybe the ballerina, they're gonna see my listing and be like, oh, I can get two for this price, and then they'll end up buying mine instead. Not always the case, but definitely um, gives me a little bit of an advantage when the market is flooded with a particular item. So just a little tip there. And I believe I got that stuffed animal from um, the Ben's uh, collaboration video that I did with Dad Planet. Um, if you guys are not following Dad Planet, definitely go over and give him a sub. And I did buy this little, um, it, it goes to like a fairy garden or something like that. Anything that's new in the package, I usually pick those items up because uh, people look for them and they like that they're new. So even new old stock, retired, discontinued items. This is a VTEC plush. It's just gonna be a bread and butter. It will probably be very long tail, but it's $1.89 a pound at my Goodwill bins. So that thing probably cost me 50 cents. It was very, very lightweight. Okay, so I mentioned Dad Planet. This is the last collaboration video we did. His video is on the top, mine is on the bottom. Definitely go check out both of those. Um, he found, I don't even wanna talk about it, the most incredible item. I'm like, how did he find that? And um, I did pretty good myself, but definitely check those out. I will try to remember to link them down below, but you can just also go over to Dad Planet's channel. And of course, you can search Goodwill Bins using my search bar, bar to find that item as well. All right, we are gonna keep digging here. Let me know, do you like the bins? 
Do you feel like you get good deals? Okay, this is a lovey, and I always pick up loveys. And I have told you guys before that if you want to learn about all things plush, go see the Rebel Reseller. Uh, she actually has a video on loveys, the best loveys to look for, the ones that sell for the most money. I'll tell you, YouTube is knowledge. If you guys throw these videos on while you work, and um, instead of watching TV, you are going to learn so much, and it's going to help you in your business. Uh, this Frisbee, it is a, a sport disc, and I actually reached out to Yard Sales and Dreams for some guidance on that. Definitely go and check out her channel. She has reseller content that is fantastic, and she is definitely a bolo finder. You will learn so much from her. All right, we're going to keep on digging. Look at all these hangers. Has anybody bought hangers from the Goodwill bins? Um, there's another Frisbee. I did not get that one. Uh, a lot of times it depends on what it says on the actual Frisbee, some of that advertising, and if the Frisbee is vintage. I did pick up dinosaurs. Anything that is marked Jurassic World um, has that little mark on the foot. I am going to pick those up. Okay, so these right here. This is vintage wallpaper. And I did put this in my cart. It wasn't in the greatest condition or I probably would have asked if they would have given me a price for those items. Because it's a heavy item, they will sometimes work with you on the price and they probably just wanted to get rid of that and save it from the landfill. But $1.89 a pound, that would have cost me more than I would have wanted to pay. But because the condition was not that great, I left it behind. Do you guys think that was a mistake? I know vintage wallpaper, especially that textured stuff. People are going for a certain look in their home and they can't buy that stuff anymore. So some of it can be big money. I'm going to guess that Noelle Farm Girl Scavenger is going to be like, you should have got the wallpaper. Noelle also has an amazing YouTube channel and she sells some really weird stuff. Um, I think I sell weird stuff, but she also sells really weird stuff. Uh, she was actually posted in my last Goodwill Bins video that she was upset with me, not really upset with me, but she's like, why didn't you grab the Tupperware? She loves selling vintage Tupperware items and she does really well with it. And one thing she talks about is people pricing Tupperware too low and that she keeps her items priced high and they sell. So check her out for more reseller tips. All right. And she does have a video on Tupperware. Check this out, you guys. Talk about selling weird items. That guy right there, he was missing his foot. I, he was missing body parts. And I put him up for parts or repair, and he sold so fast. Obviously, if he would have been complete, he probably would have been a bolo. Speaking of bolos, right here, you got uh, Larry the Veggie Tales. Anything Veggie Tales, definitely a pickup. I sold that guy for $42 and some change, um, and he sold pretty quickly. He did um, talk. He was pretty cool. So that was Larry Boy from Veggie Tales. Um, again, if I see Veggie Tales, it is going in my cart. I don't care if it is an action little minifigure or if it's, um, oh, what do you call it? A plush. If it's Veggie Tales, I'm getting it. This is another Boyd's Bear. I thought this one was adorable because it was holding the little elephant. So I did grab that one. Remote controls, you guys have heard me talk about those before. I actually found two identical ones. I used Google Lens to figure out which toy that went to. I put batteries in it. I make sure the light comes on and that's really the best way you can test it if you don't have the actual item. So far, I haven't had any problems um, with that. Here's the snowman that I, the Doc McStuffin snowman that I put with the little dragon earlier in the video. I don't know, should I got that silly little guy? Is that a pantyhose thing? I can't tell. It kind of looks like it. So people make crafts out of pantyhose and some of the vintage items can do very, very well. The vintage Christmas especially. Um, I think that's a caboodle. I probably should have got that. I don't know why I left it behind. Uh, I have picked up caboodles at the bins before. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood. Um, but yeah, I left it behind for some reason. Some of those can do really well. I think the market used to be better for those. They're kind of, you know, you can't get as much now uh, for them. But, you know, that's kind of with everything. Certain things are trending at certain times. That's why you definitely want to look everything up. 
even if you see it in a video where somebody else sold the item for big money, if it's a month later, that item may not be trending. You don't know how many items have been trending because of a TikTok video or uh, something like that. And, you know, they are going for big money. And then all of a sudden, the market kind of goes down on those items. Typically, they still stay in the BOLO range, but um, definitely keep that in mind. I don't know what that shoe was. I don't know if that was an 18-inch doll or not. I do pick up typically any 18-inch doll shoes. This is a forever collectible hot dog plush, and um, I showed you a Mercari listing for that. And what I do on Mercari is I offer free shipping. Um, if eBay is flooded, a lot of times those items are going to do better on Poshmark and Mercari. What I do is I start my items on eBay, and then I cross-post with List Perfectly to Mercari and Poshmark. And I do have a video down in the description that shows you how to use List Perfectly. It's a tutorial. I walk you through it. Um, I actually show you how to use the catalog, which is an amazing feature that I do not use. Um, and then I show you how I do it as well. But if you decide you want to check that out, um, you can use coupon referral code BOLOBUDDIES, all one word, and that will get you 30% off your first month. But what I always say is, items that are flooded on eBay. So let's say there's 200 of them on eBay. Mercari and Poshmark are smaller platforms and there may only be 20 or five or 10. So it's, yes, less eyes on your items because the platforms are not as big, but your item may sell quicker over there. I have had items that I've had listed on eBay and then I put them over onto the other platforms with List Perfectly and they sell really quickly because for that very reason. Another reason is, oh, there's a Bubba keg. Uh, Noel Farm Girl Scavenger just sold one of those, I think in the $30 range, but that one didn't have a lid, so I left it behind. But another thing I say about uh, cross-posting, on Mercari and on Poshmark, your money goes into like a little bank, and then you can use that money to buy things, or you can transfer it to your bank account. So a lot of times, People that are selling on those platforms are hobby resellers. Some of them are only doing it for money to shop. So they're going to use that money and spend it on that platform. So they may end up buying something from you because they have a credit to buy. Does that make sense? They're not even going to look on eBay to see if it's cheaper or um, check other platforms. They're just going to buy it from you. All right, this little... Uh, Ernie here. He's parachute material. I got really excited about him. I thought he was going to be big money because some of those parachute items, that parachute nylon material items, uh, puff -a lumps in particular can do really well. He did not comp out high, unfortunately. I did grab that baby blanket again, talking about items that are in new, new in the packaging. Both of those last two items I picked up, that's why I grabbed them because they're new old stock or just new original packaging. Uh, so easy to list. Most of them have a barcode. Snap a few pictures and you are ready to go. All right, we are looking here. Found some plush. Uh, a lot of these items I did throw back. I do check out things like this. Um, really, I'm just looking for anything that looks vintage. I uh, did not see anything in that that looked like your standard, like just pack of children's cheap, not really cheap, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, everyday items, not, nothing vintage or high dollar, no big money bolos. I'm not going to be able to sell those. However, I have seen people sell used crayons on eBay. Um, anybody ever sold used crayons? I know Rachel Strickland um, is really good at selling used pencils. All right, let's check this out here. I did not buy the bear. I pulled the sound box out of the bear and I sold that. I looked up comps on that. It's a Dex Bear. Comps were not that great, but I knew that I could sell the sound box as a replacement item. I figured I was going to get it home and it was not going to work because I figured that's why it was at the bins. But I got it home, checked it, and it actually worked. So I just had to put a battery in it. That sold really quickly for, I believe it was the best offer of $10. So back to talking about Rachel Strickland selling these pencils. Let me see if I can grab you guys a video real quick. 
When you see a bag or mixed lot of pencils at a thrift store or yard sale, definitely pick those up. I picked up an entire Ziploc bag of pens and pencils for $1.50. These mechanical pencils were among several others in there. And guys, these two used mechanical pencils and lead just sold on eBay for $20 plus shipping. Two sets of these were in that bag among 18 karat gold cross pens and vintage wooden pencils. Pick up pencils. I learned so much from other resellers in this community, and I love shouting out other channels that I learn from. So everybody that I have shouted out in this video will be linked down below. I encourage you guys to go and subscribe to their channels and definitely check out um, some of their videos. They are all incredible people. Right here, Dad Planet sells those things all the time, and he can just keep on selling them, but uh, they can bring in big money. Are they croquet sets? I think that's what they're called. Me personally, I don't want to ship those things, but I remember seeing in multiple videos where he has sold those on several occasions. So check him out for more reseller tips on selling big and heavy items, things that I run from. So I don't like finding a box. I don't like shipping them. But uh, some people, they are really good at that type of thing. I think there's one video he has where he, uh, it was like a little tykes uh play set and he like shows how he boxed that thing up and I'm like oh my goodness that is so much work but it was a bolo so definitely check out uh shipping tips over there all right let's see what else we find so at your goodwill bins is it usually crowded where which area do most people go to let me know in the comments I feel like clothing is the big place for people at our bins. All right, right here. This is a Fisher Price Loving Family Dream Dollhouse. Of course, I'm not going to buy the whole thing. The whole thing had condition issues. Things It had glitter on it. It was kind of a hot mess. So what did I do? I pulled off the windows. I pulled off the doors. And I will sell those items separately. And that thing is going to the landfill. Nobody else wanted that. Nobody else was touching it. So instead of everything going to the landfill, I am going to save those parts. I'm going to save the windows. Somebody has bought that dollhouse and they don't have the windows and they need it. And I'm going to tell you that I sell those replacement windows all the time. Um, I sold a bunch of them individually. I sold um, four of them. And I think they were selling in the eight to ten dollar range individually, and the buyer paid shipping. But they're kind of a pain to ship. Uh, usually, what I do is I sandwich them between um, cardboard, uh, like a box, cardboard box. I cut it to size, and then I'll put it in a poly mailer. So it takes me a little bit of time to ship. So for that one, I ended up um, selling all four together, and you can do it either way. Um, I popped up the screenshot of what that actually sold for, and it did sell really, really fast as a set of four, but I also probably sold the ones individually over a month, and I made more selling them individually, but it was more work because I had to ship them individually as well. So time is money. You got to figure out what works best for you. Um, I personally like parting things out, but wanted to try it as a lot and see what happened. And it did well that way as well. All right, we are going to keep digging here. I did have to, um, they had some glitter on some of them, so I had to clean them up and get that off. A lot of times you will see the dollhouses and they will be faded. The items will still sell faded. All right, this is a squeaker toy. Talk about selling an item that does not work. The squeaker did not work. So I priced it, I think, too low. That thing flew out of my store. Um, it was a bread and butter bolo, but fast sales, you got to love fast sales. And the person messaged me and was so nice. They were so excited to find that item. So those vintage items, they're definitely worth a pickup. That was a little vintage plastic car. I went ahead and grabbed that. And we got some Pokemon cards. I always throw those in my cart. Um, you can sell them individually. There is an app where you can scan them. It's kind of glitchy. Um, I did a video over on my reseller testing Bolo products where I was doing the, I think they're called Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So you can kind of see what I mean there. Here are all the dollhouse um, windows that I popped off of here. And you can see this thing is, it, it's not in great condition. 
Um, and I just, I left it behind. So I just grabbed the parts, but they're going to be taking this bin away and that's going to go straight out to the landfill anyway. So I saved some parts from it. All right, let's see what else we have here. Lots and lots of stuff this day. I spent a lot of money, um, but I spent a lot of money, but I am going to make a lot of money. Again, this is going to be a two-part series, um, two separate videos. I may pop a different Goodwill bins video in in between, so you might not see them back to back. Um, I took one of my friends up to the Goodwill bins with me, and she actually, I thought she was going to be bored because she's not a reseller. So I'm like, why don't you like shop for me and grab me a bag of stuff? And, you know, then I can do a video on it and list those items. But you know what? She ended up filling up her cart with personal items. It was cracking me up. She loved it. Um, and she has been back with me since. So I'll probably take her again in the future. The second time she didn't shop for me. But I did do a video of the things that she bought for me. And I think I, I think she did really good. I've sold a bunch of those items. So you can check that video out. It looks like this. I have some reseller tips in that video also about how I parted one of the items out that she picked up for me and um, made more money selling it that way. So really, really, she found some really great stuff. All right, let's see. We are going to dig, dig, dig. I like to dig to the bottom, looking for those smalls. Do you like smalls? Does um, What is your favorite thing to sell? Let me know down in the comments. That is um, Neutrogena or something like that. Looking for expiration dates. If something has an expiration date, I typically stay away from it. I do have a friend who um, has had some issues with expiration dates. Um, so I just, I don't, I don't mess with that stuff. This here is a Jelly Cat book. It's a soft cloth book with the little tails that stick out. Super cute item. I thought it was going to comp out really good. And it's a bread and butter, but uh, definitely worth the pickup. All right. Do you guys see anything that I have missed? Anything that you would have picked up that I left behind? There's been times where you guys are like, why didn't you grab it? I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't remember that. There's times I don't even see things, you know, it is so cluttered and full and messy that sometimes you just, your eyes miss it. Um, so it's great to get you guys' feedback, especially when you uh, put a timestamp so I can go back and look and be like, oh, that also helps people looking at the comments. Uh, they can go look for that timestamp and it helps everybody learn. It keeps this really educational and um, I really work hard to help everyone learn. And I, I learn a lot also um, from these types of videos. And videos, especially my featured members and my Facebook members share where I do what solds from other people. You would not believe how many items I have found from those featured videos. And I only know about them from doing the videos. All right, that's a little Star Wars figure, Cake Topper. Put Cake Topper in the title. That might help you uh, sell that item. A lot of times parents are making, or even cake designers, are looking for cake toppers to personalize cakes with maybe a child's favorite character or something like that. Instead of going to a bakery, they just want to do it themselves, and they will use small toys. Um, Farm Girl Scavenger Noel also did, um, in one of her titles for, they were small Christmas ornaments, which I thought was really, really clever. Um, they were really like mini miniature uh, Christmas ornaments and she put cake toppers and I was like, yeah, that would work. So um, definitely another idea there. All right, we are getting close to the end here. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Uh, loving these videos. If you love the Goodwill Bins videos, please give me that feedback down below. Let me know if this is something you want to see more of. Um, any feedback or um, critique that is nice, <laughs> that you can say in a nice way, please let me know. I am always open to feedback. Thank you guys so much for being here and thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And again, go check out those channels I talked about in this video. Link down in the description. Also links to things I use for my reseller business to help me um, just 
have a better reseller business, make things easier for me. Um, I'll tell you, tools cost money, but when you sell more because of those tools and you can do things quicker, you're going to get more done. You're going to get more items listed. So in the long run, those items pay off even if you have to pay for the service. Talk to your accountant. A lot of those items are tax write-offs. So um, as resellers, we need tax write-offs, right? So uh, check with your CPA about that. And this right here is another item. It is a Barbie, uh, a Barbie, uh, Stacy doll. <laughs> and did you see my photo? How good it looked? I used photo room for that. It almost looked like a stock photo. So check out photo room also. All right, you guys, speaking of items that I use for my reseller business, this is a photo room quick demo. And why do I like photo room? Number one, I can batch. I can do them in batches, just like you see here. I am pulling up the items and I am clicking on all of these and it is going to white out the background, all of them at once. It's super, super fast. Um, the free version does not do that. However, there is a free version that you are welcome to download. If you want to get 10% um, off your first year of Photo Room, there is a link down in the description. If you use that, you'll get 10% off of your annual subscription. All right, so you can see right here, it is whiting out the background. And I clicked on eBay, and when you click on eBay, it formats the listing down to the size of the eBay photo format. So it kind of crops it in, and you don't even have to, to go in and crop your items. Like if you took your picture too far away, it is automatically going to pull it in for you. All right, and then you're just gonna save your photos, and now you are ready to go. Those items are in your phone's photo album and are ready to upload to eBay with the white background. It's fantastic. Also works great on jewelry. Now, there is an option, like if you're on a desktop, to use the eBay filter. If you already have a white background, that works pretty good. There's times when um, I have a really large item and I will take it out on my concrete outside in my driveway. And I love that you can't tell it's outside on my concrete. Um, but you can see these crisp white backgrounds for jewelry are just incredible. Um, again, there is a free version where you can do items individually, but do you see how I'm batch doing this? I can do so many at once and that just saves me time and time is money. So to me, it's worth paying for the pro plan. Um, but you have to decide what works for your business, but definitely get the free version. And I think on the free version, it does say photo room down at the bottom right hand corner. So you can see here, these are lots or bundles of items. It works great for that as well. So it really gives the division between the items and the crisp white background. Okay, feel free to let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. That was just a little quick demo I thought I would put together for you guys. Thanks for watching.